Namaste. Today I'm going to speak about the difference between a karmic relationship, soulmate relationship and twin flame relationship. Well, I am aware that there is already a lot of information on the internet available these days. But this entire video, uh, you know, I just felt like making this video, which is based on my experiences, my research and whatever I have learned in my journey as I have come across soulmates, karmic relationships and twin flame relationship in my life. Okay, so I'm just going to give you some really important points about this, all these three relationships. Yes, I'm ready with my notes so that I don't miss out on something. Now, something about the karmic relationship. Now, please understand that the karmic relationships happen to balance karma from past lives or from this life. Now, they start instantly and they are very intense. You know, initially you feel absolutely attracted to each other. These relationships are controlling, you know, like one or the other person will try to control you. They are basically dominant, you know, the dominating partner. There is no space for selfless love. Yes. You know, it's like more about being selfish, self-centered, you know, I, me and myself are the three important words for these partners. These relationships are full of jealousy and suspicion. Karmic bonds are selfish. You must understand this. These relations are addictive. You may feel addicted to each other and one or the other partner, you know, may get into addictions like drugs, pornography, smoking, alcohol, anger, abuse, rage are involved in these kind of relationships. You feel uh, financially restricted at some point of time in these relationships, you know, where you are just giving, 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 investing a lot of money, but the other past pa partner is never ever satisfied. He or she is always complaining that you are not doing enough. <clears throat> I'm sorry, there could be an issue of weight loss or weight gain because of severe stress in these relationships. There is a tendency of one or the other partner remembering you or inviting you or calling you only when they want se sexual intimacy from you. One or the other partner tends to lie a lot in these relationships. You know, even if they are caught cheating on you, they will never ever admit. Yes, they have a tendency of cheating. They they can be in multiple relationships at the same time. They are, uh, you know, they suffer from some kind of obsession, you know, like uh, they will keep watching over you all the time. They will smell your clothes. Where have you been if there was someone else with you or probably somebody touched you, you know, like that. And there is a constant cycle of breakups, patch up, breakup, patch up. You know, and once you are into a breakup mode, the partner, the other partner is going to pull you back through a lot of melodrama, crying, and you end up together again, but then again head for a breakup after a few weeks or months. Most of the time you feel it's destined to happen. You know, you are supposed to stay together, but no matter how much effort you put in these relationships, they keep failing. Now, this relationship also brings codependency. Both of you feel dependent on each other and one of the partner may feel that he or she is going to die if the other person is not going to be there, which is not true, obviously. Now, these relationships bring out your worst fears, fear of death, fear of being left alone, fear of being abandoned, fear of betrayal, fear of commitment. They hold a mirror to your worst vulnerabilities and ugly insecurities. Yes. These relationships are incredibly volatile, erratic and absolutely unpredictable. And please understand, these relationships never last long. They keep triggering you, you know, like one or the other partner will keep triggering you in a way. And these triggers happen so that you accept respect and love yourself more. You know, the love you which you keep looking outside of you, it's actually within. So that is why you feel triggered. Now moving on to soulmate relationships, what kind of uh, you know, behavior patterns a soulmate has or they display. Now, please understand that soulmates are our parents, uh, maybe our children, our siblings, our spouses. Soulmates, when you break that word, soul plus mate, so it's like soul's friend. So these souls keep incarnating with you almost in every incarnation to help you uh, 
to evolve into a better version of yourself okay so these are really the most beautiful relationship anybody can ever think of these relationships are based on connection of minds mutual respect total understanding and they never involve jealousy or selfishness there is no place for these things because it's a karmic trait now soulmates feel great empathy for each other's flaws and vulnerability they are never going to judge you it's like meeting your best friend you feel so comfortable in front of each other with each other you understand each other's emotional language now you don't have to keep making effort to uh, make the other pass other partner loved because he or she already knows you know how you feel or how you, how you make them feel you don't have to make constant efforts like you do in a karmic relationship soulmates don't mind if they are not on the same page yes there will be difference of opinion you know sometimes but they don't mind they are not going to judge you or abandon you or curse you no these are typical traits of a karmic relationship you have a shared vision of future it's like a team work let's cook together let's drive together let's walk let's listen to this music let's dance you know those kind of moments you are each other's biggest fan so no matter what you do it could be a very small gesture but you always end up praising each other encouraging each other you know that's the best part that's one of the best parts of soulmate relationships and soulmates bring out the best in each other you are comfortable in being your most authentic selves together like i mean you just don't feel like taking shower it's okay you have not done your hair you're wearing your very sim- like uh, usual uh, usual probably the night dress or maybe you are in your tee and the pajama it doesn't matter they love you the way you are they adore you they respect you so you can be in your skin and you don't have to worry about being judged or being left out or or being you know pointed out in some way sexual uh, intimacy sessions are amazing in case of soulmate relationships you feel loved nurtured looked after and you never feel drained because uh, feeling drained is a trait of a karmic relationship when you are physically sexually intimate you both fight for the relationship no matter whatever happens you are going to stand your ground and you are going to stand take stand for each other you will always take stand for each other yes that's right you feel secure even when you are not together so you don't have to uh, you know make sure that okay is he does he still love me does she still love me does she care you know no that doesn't happen in a soulmate relationship it happens in a karmic relationship your quiet space is a peaceful place you don't feel sad or you don't feel left out or unloved when your soulmate is not talking he's he or she is just looking at you you know and just by uh, those beautiful staring moments i i would say the eye contact moments are amazingly beautiful because they convey so much of love so much of uh, emotions you know you don't scream curse or threaten each other that i'm going to file a divorce no that's not a trait of a soulmate relationship or a twin flame relationship it's a trait of a karmic relationship you believe in giving you know you actually know how to take care of your partner of your soulmate and you definitely know the art of apologizing yeah you know that is one of the four most important ingredients in a successful relationship you know the art of apologizing the art of expressing love which is amazingly a uh, very beautiful quality of the soulmate relationships okay now moving on to the twin flame relationships uh well please understand that not all twins you know incarnate at the same time on earth one twin will incarnate in the higher realms and the other will be on earth this is the majority of the cases in twin flames secondly please understand please accept that take your time in accepting this that not all twins end up getting married to each other in every incarnation you know it's not possible you don't have to lose heart for this or you don't have to feel disheartened everything happens for a reason now it's not necessary that in a twin flame relationship it will be love at first sight no it's not necessary because yeah sometimes it may feel that oh wow when i met him or when i met her it was like instantly i had that connection yes you may feel that connection but it, it may not be love at first sight you basically feel that you've been you have been together with each other even before this incarnation that's the feeling eye contact is very strong much of communication happens through eye contact in twin flame journey 
you will complete each other's statements. For example, I'm saying, let's go and my guy says for a drive. And yes, of course, I was thinking of uh, going for a drive. Or just he would say, Varsha, let's go for a, a walk. <laughs> and he's like, wow, how do you know that? I was like, yeah, I just know it. I can feel it. So twins tend to complete each other's statements. You will wear same color clothes and sometimes even same brands. One of the partner will end up into multiple relationships. The other partner will wait for the other person to, you know, come back to him or her. One twin will, one twin will do all the spiritual work. The other twin will do all the material and the physical realm work. Most of the meeting happens in astral world, dreams, visions or telepathy. Believe me, you don't meet much, you know. The twins, they don't meet much in the physical realm. The most of the communication meetings happen through visions, dreams and through astral travel. Telepathic communication is very dominant in these relationships. The twin flame relationship is not abusive physically or sexually. Yeah, that's a trait of a karmic relationship. Yes, but you may feel emotionally abused sometimes. It's a personal feeling. And please understand that do not take anything personally when your twin is not talking or not treating you well because he or she is going through his or her journey. So let's not judge them. Now, both the twins will have a mission for humanity. It is quite possible that they are here to work for senior citizens, maybe women's rights, maybe widows, maybe special children with special abilities, maybe spastic kids, maybe autistic children, you know. There will be a mission which is shared between both the twins. It could be environment conservation. It could be, uh, you know, maybe doing something for the endangered species of plants and animals. Twin flame relationships, it not is not necessary that it will be a romantic relationship. No, it may or may not be a romantic relationship. Physical separation results into physical pain in chest, throat, shoulder areas. Okay, and you will have a lot of stomach issues. And I think I've summed up almost all the points I have ever experienced and felt through my journey, through my client's journey. I leave it to you. Now, please understand that this video is based on my views, my perception, my experiences. And it is created to make you aware or identify whether you are in a soulmate relationship or in a karmic relationship or a twin flame relationship. Thank you so much for being there. All my love to you.